In this lesson, we are going to learn about covalent compound properties. Uh, covalent compound properties depend on the molecular polarity, which is the topic of the previous lesson. So if you haven't heard how to figure out molecular polarity, you should go back and look at that lesson now. Now your handout may not have shaded this in properly, but this should have um, a little bit of shading in the background showing that electrons are evenly distributed in a nonpolar covalent type of uh, molecule. A polar covalent molecule is showing that the electrons are spending more time around one atom than the other, leading to a partial negative charge on one end and a partial positive on, another, on the other end. So if we're looking at electron sharing nonpolar covalent, this will be an equal sharing. And a polar covalent will be an unequal sharing. The overall electron distribution is symmetrical, right? So there's a symmetrical or an even distribution of electrons around the molecule in a nonpolar covalent. In a polar covalent, it is an asymmetrical uh, distribution of electrons around the molecule. The overall molecular charge, this is very important to understanding today's lesson. Um, a nonpolar covalent will have no charge associated with it, but a polar covalent will be slightly charged. Right, that's what the delta negative and the delta positive are referring to. That means, the overall molecular charge means that there will be intermolecular attractive forces, right? If you bring in a second one of these molecules, if I try to draw a second one, I'm not very good at it, but um, you can see here that the negative end of this molecule is going to be attracted to the positive end of that molecule. Um, that's going to mean that there are intermolecular attractive forces present. And what that means is this molecule is going to be sticky to itself. Okay, um, A nonpolar covalent will have no intermolecular attractive forces, or if there are, they are very, very weak, uh, which means it is not sticky. These molecules are not going to stick to each other. So the properties that can be explained based on the fact that polar covalent molecules have these sticky forces in between them, uh, what that means is that the state of, uh, well, we'll talk about this first. The relative melting points and boiling points are going to be higher and in a polar covalent. And they're going to be lower in the nonpolar covalent. If the molecules are sticking together, if they're sticking together, it's going to take a lot more energy to melt them from their solid state or to boil them away from their liquid state. All right, so higher uh, melting points and boiling points compared to nonpolar covalents, which will have lower melting points and boiling points. What that means is that the state of matter at standard temperature and pressure is that polar covalents are going to tend to be in the solid or maybe the liquid state, whereas the nonpolar covalents with their lower melting points and boiling points, they're going to tend to be um, liquids or gases. They're going to, it's going to take very little energy to melt them or to even turn them into a gas. So that'll be their natural state. Uh, because of those weak forces. Their solubility in water. Polar covalents uh, are very soluble in water because water is also polar. So water is charged, therefore it will dissolve pretty readily those polar covalent compounds. But because nonpolar molecules are not charged, they are going to be non-soluble in water. And it's all because water is polar. Water is slightly charged. So it doesn't, it's not even going to see the, the, the nonpolar substances because they have no charge associated with them. Lastly, we can talk about their ability to conduct electricity. Um, if it's an electrolyte, it can conduct electricity. And if it's a non-electrolyte, it cannot conduct electricity. Um, and so the idea here is that neither one of these are considered electrolytes. Both of these are non-electrolytes. Because even though polar covalent 
has charged particles. It's not enough to have freely moving negative and positive charges, right? And so really only ionic compounds are electrolytes, right? And so remembering that electrolytes are um, when the definition is when dissolved in water, they can conduct electricity. Okay. So that's what it means to be an electrolyte. When it's dissolved in water, it can conduct electricity. Um, so it makes sense that this is non-electrolyte because they're not even going to dissolve in water. These will dissolve in water, but they're not going to conduct electricity because they don't have freely moving charged particles. Their charged particles are kind of stuck together. They're not separated, they're stuck together, okay? So this little mini lesson um, is meant to build upon the idea that if you know the polarity of the molecule, that's going to tell you whether or not the molecule has what are called intermolecular attractive forces. If it does, as in the case of a polar covalent, that means the molecules are going to be sticky. They're going to stick together. They're going, to want to, they're going to want to hang out together. That's going to mean that they have higher melting points and boiling points. That's going to keep them in the solid or the liquid phase. They're not likely to be gases. Uh, they are going to be soluble in water because water is also polar. However, they are not going to be electrolytes because they're not free to move. So covalent compound properties depend on the polarity of a molecule. That's it for this lesson. We'll see you back in the classroom.